is the Heron TP. It's actually really loud. It's a propeller plane. It's not Israel's biggest, but it's apparently their uh, best selling product. And it's about to taxi off to do a test run. The funny thing is, they don't want to tell us that the other thing besides cameras that they can put on it is rockets. And that's the main thing that people are buying it for. But you'll never hear an Israeli official admit that. UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, better known as drones. They're big business, especially in Israel. In fact, Israel is the biggest exporter of drones on the planet. And with the technology getting lighter and more sophisticated, drones are being used for spying and surveillance like never before. But of course, drones are most infamous for their targeted killings, performed in multiple conflict zones around the world. So drones are saving human soldiers from getting hurt, but does their pilot's remoteness to the field make killing too easy? There are like two dozen drones in here. I think this is what the future is going to feel like when Skynet takes over and they become self-aware. We're at Israel Aerospace Industries hangar, meeting with a representative of the drone division, known as Malat. Uh, Malat is one of the most veteran and uh, experienced UAV uh, manufacturer. Our models are operational all over the world. UAVs, the idea was a lesson from the 1973 war. The Egyptian division crossed the Swiss Canal. We were caught unready. There were drones that were taking aerial photographs, but to develop such a photograph takes six to eight hours, too much time because the battlefield is dynamic. If we had at that time a modern drone flying over the Suez Canal, bringing us real-time intelligence, the results of the war would be much different. So do you see in the future a video game where operators in different countries are flying UAVs that shoot each other down like fighter pilots used to do? UAV systems are going to replace manned aircraft. Zvika says by the year 2035, drones will comprise 95% of the airborne fighting force. So can your drones fire rockets, do targeted assassinations? Well, uh, I would uh, be much happy to answer you that question. But if I'll tell you about anything to do with uh, armament and uh, UAVs, I'll have to kill you. We're heading to an airfield in the north of Israel uh, where we're going to watch a drone take off. And this airfield is called Ein Shemer. It's not even on Google Maps. So we've been lost for the last 15 minutes, but it looks like we finally found it. And apparently it does exist, so here we are. We're from uh, Vice. Uh, we've come to film the drones. As confused as the soldier on guard duty seemed on our arrival, our handler quickly showed up to set out the terms of our visit. Good morning. She asked not to appear on camera. Hi. This is the Israeli Air Force Base. Okay, just want to have a short preview. Mm -hmm. We have over 50 customers, right. 5 50 customers around the world. Are they all countries? Um, yes. Okay. No. 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 Because uh, if you take a Coast Guard and an Army, yeah. so it has... Oh, I so see. It's, so it's within the... So it's two customers, but one country. Gotcha. Uh, so, it's a good question. Okay. So, 50 customers, not 50 countries. Right. 50 clients is a lot of business, especially when most of them have national budgets backing their appetites for weaponry. One of the drone operators, who didn't want us to show his face on camera, introduced us to one of the drones manufactured by IAI. Okay, first of all, we are looking at uh, Heron uh, UAV. It's uh, maybe the main bird that we uh, sell to different customers around the world. Yeah. Wingspan is uh, approximately 17 meters. Payload possibly to carry is uh, 250 kilos. And it can fly up to 36 hours uh, in operational mode. So what are the uses of this particular uh, drone? Okay, um, generally, operationally wise, you can Use your imagination, okay? Uh, 250 kilos of payload. You can use different radars, uh, sea radar or SAR radar. And of course, the camera against every scenario on the future battlefield. It doesn't carry weapons? 
As you can see, this is the specific, let's say, configuration, and you can see it has nothing on board except the cover. Right now, I mean, but next to Gaza, mm -hmm. uh, in Zderot, looking over it during the last conflict that they had yeah. there, you could really hear the drones in the sky. You could, I mean, it was like a chorus of lawnmowers circling overhead. Uh, it, again, it depends. Uh, on Gaza, you are, you are not sure that what you heard was UAVs, okay. so you can't you can't really say. No. And uh, it's as I see it. And right. uh, <laughs> again, when people hear the drone or the UAV or anything that flies above, they have the tendency to not do bad things. Gaza is ground zero for Israel's drone invasion. The hum of their propellers filled the sky day and night. During the heaviest fighting in Gaza in 2008 and 9. Human rights groups reported 87 civilians killed during the 42 drone-assisted attacks. In November 2012, the military leader of Hamas, Ahmed Jabari, was assassinated in a drone-assisted strike. The Israeli military released this footage from the drone hovering over the attack site. So we're about to see one of Israel's best-selling drones take off. It's called the Heron TP. It's made by the Israel Aerospace Industries. Look, Ma, no pilot. After the operator on the tarmac gets the drone in the air, flying duties are handed off to a sort of portable control room. So this container is where they actually pilot the drone from. I'm going to have a look inside. Okay, this is the flight field. Right. You have the artificial horizon here. Yeah. Also, you can control uh, the heading of the UAV. This is a compass that yeah. you can use. Blue arrows are the commands, green ones are the reports from the UAV. You can control the speed here. They can choose a spot on the screen that they want the drone to circle around, and then it shows here, these circles show the ground track that it follows. Basically, it can circle around that point so that it can get the best images of that area possible. And it pretty much functions autonomously after that point. Right now, it's just circling by itself without anybody essentially controlling any of what it's doing. I wonder what the red button does. Yeah. It's true that the Heron TP rarely carries weapons of its own, but it's often used to guide weapons fired from elsewhere by locking onto targets for them. And for all the claims of precision supporters of the use of drones make, a recent study found that strikes carried out by drones are 10 times more deadly to civilians than strikes by manned aircraft. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen on one of these test flights? There is a story about a person that uh, was on a construction flight yeah. that uh, was above uh, his house, above the town that he lived in. And he saw a car that he didn't recognize. Uh, nobody's supposed to be in, uh, in the house. When he called, somebody answered. Uh, this is how he discovered that his wife cheating on him. <laughs> the strangest thing about the guys in the control room is that they don't even have to be there. It's only Israeli laws that require drones to have spotters to man the equipment in case of a malfunction. Otherwise, the drones can pretty much operate independently. Drones are fully automatic, programmable robots that can take off, land, taxi, and even put themselves away. I'm going to try to see if it can see me. Hello! Hi, drone. It dawned on me that the drones would soon be able to select and engage targets autonomously. In fact, the technology is already here. We've only to make the decision to take humans out of the loop and turn our remote-controlled weapons into killer robots. I sure can't see it. I guess that's kind of the point. 